welcome to the Jazz Ranch. I want to show you three techniques for playing two five ones. This is the most important exercise you can learn for jazz. And the first technique is a hand position in which the left hand is playing chords in block chord position and the right hand is playing melody or improvising. The second technique is the spread voice in which the harmonies are spread out between the two hands and it's really good for comping, comping it or playing in a band and comping. And the third technique, the chord is in the right hand, voiced in a particular way, and the left hand is free to play bass lines. Now this is good for accompaniment and particularly when you're playing in a duo situation where you want to play bass lines and you have just have piano and a singer or piano and a saxophone, piano, guitar, and so on. You can play bass lines and chords in the right hand. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the two five ones in these three positions. And it's really important to learn this. So here we go now with two five ones and three positions. Welcome to the Jazz Ranch Studio. I'm going to be showing you how to play two five ones in three positions and three techniques. They're very good for pianists to learn these three techniques. So the first technique is when you have the block chords in your left hand, the full chord in your left hand, and the right hand is playing the melody or improvising. Now, we're going to start with the key of C, and the 2-5-1 in the key of C is D minor 7, G7, C major 7. Now, I'm going to start with the root position, because that's the first one you want to learn, and you want to, you want to master that first before you move to inversion. So, D minor 7 in root position, there it is, and it's being called the D minor 7 right there. So you know it's got the root, the third, the fifth, root, third, root, third, fifth, flat 7, or minor 7. G7, I have to put a G on the bottom for it to read a G7. But there it is, and it, it's inverted, so it has the fifth, the flat 7, fifth, flat 7, root, and third there, and then we move down to the C major 7 there. It has root, third, fifth, seventh. You want to learn that one first, and you know, play, play a melody in the right hand that fits it, like something like this. See, so that's the first one you want to learn, right there. Try to learn that progression and that melody. Now, I can put a well-known melody to that. I've got you under my skin. See, so that particular song has a 2-5-1 in its melody right at the start. So there's a practical application of the 2-5-1. Now you can learn that in other keys, right? So let's start, go to, let's go to F, because that's the next easiest key. It's one flat. So root position, inversion. So G minor 7, C7 inverted, F major 7, F6. So we're going to give these chords one measure each, so, yeah, so it's the fifth, melody starts on the fifth. I'm not worrying about rhythm yet or, or timing, I just want you to get the feel of the 2-5-1. Now, you really want to learn those in all keys, like G, you know, B flat. You want to practice these first, you know. E flat. Um, I'm so used to doing the inversions. So once you practice that, say in five keys, just start with the five easiest keys: C, F, B flat, E flat, and G. Start with those, and then work into the more difficult keys after that. I'm not going to go through all of the keys because this will take 45 minutes. I want to show you the three positions. And I want to show you first the inversions now for this first technique. So to do the inversion, we go up one, then we add the ninth, drop the root, add the ninth. And all we have to do is go like that to get to the five. So there's your D minor nine. 
There's your G13 with a 9 in it. There it is. And there's your C major 9. So the advantage of doing the inversion is you're going to be able to add the 9ths and the 13ths. You get a more colorful chord and it's a more modern sounding chord. So you want to learn the first inversion and the second inversion and the third. But primarily you want to use the first inversion, which is the A form, according to John Mahegan, and the third inversion, which is the B form. These are all laid out for you in my book, so you want to check out my book, and I have a video on my book so you can see what's in it. So there, now, we have the 251 in, in C in first inversion. No? So. Right? We're in root position. First inversion. It's more modern sounding. Now up here, it's a little thin. So it's not so good in the third inversion. See, that would be one, two, three, drop root, add nine. You know, put the, put the bass note in and you're going to see the chord. There it is, D minor. There's your G13. And here's your C major nine, you see? So now you're getting the ninths in the chord by using the inversions. And you can do fancy things with the five if you want. You can go... Put a flat nine in it. That's good to learn, that's more advanced. But you want to start with the root position, then learn the first inversion, then learn the third inversion. The third inversion is going to work really good in the key of F because it's right in the mid range. This is the third inversion in F. So F has these inversions root, first inversion, and then third inversion. See, so let's try that out with the melody. There's the three ways that you can play it using the root position, first inversion, and third inversion. And you, these are all written out for you in my book. And also you can uh, watch the video to see, see where they are, what chapters they're in, and so on. Now, the second technique is when you play a spread voicing in which the harmonies are spread out between the two hands. And this is a comping position. In other words, a good way to comp is to use spread voicings. And spread voicings, of course, are used when you're playing ballads a lot. But anyway, to, to play the 2-5-1 in uh, spread, a good one would be this one. That's key of C now. D minor. So what I have is, in the left hand, I have root, third, minor, third, not seventh, that's the flat seven or the minor seven, nine there. See, so with a spread voicing, I can get the nine very easy. It's right there. Now I can put, make this a tenth, like that. It's even bigger sound. Then I go up here, the G7 here. Now you notice that the roots are on the bottom and you're getting a big sound. The spread voicing is a big sound. You know, so it's great for comping like this. with a flat nine in that in that uh, G7 chord. So I I just got two notes here and three three notes here. I could I could make this four notes if I wanted to. I could I could do this. You know, but you don't need it. You mainly need a root, a third, a seventh, and then a color tone. And you can add a fifth if you like, or I could add an eleventh. that or t with tenths. See, so you want to go through your your uh, two five ones in the spread voicing. Now, if you if you did it this way, you can do it that way. That takes you through on, on one cycle. You had six, six two, five, ones there. You have to go up one half step. Get the other. Now these are all written out for you in my book. So 
trying to sell some books so I can make a living here. Anyway, um, so that's the second technique, the spread voicing 251s. And you can just start out with the easy keys, the five I mentioned, C, F, B flat, G, E flat. Those start with those five as, as a good beginning. Okay, the third technique now. This one is very interesting because it frees up the left hand to play bass lines. You're going to play the full chord in the right hand, or at least three notes in the right hand, the three important notes of the chord other than the root. You need the third, the you need the third, the seventh, and some other note, either a color tone or, or a fifth. So here, there is three notes. And what, what did I have the root? So I have the third, the fifth, and the seventh. And I could play it like that, and I had the ninth. Now I can get more rhythm with this technique because I can play a bass line. Here's a two beat bass line. Walking. Okay, so you can go through the cycle with this. Here's the F. Walking bass lines, I cover these. Two beat bass lines, I cover this in my book as well. I have chapters on that and the rules for playing them. So there's your three techniques in review. Technique number one, left hand chords, right hand melody. Technique number two, spread voicings. In which most of the time in the left hand you're playing root the seventh, root the third, root the seventh, or the reverse of that. Root, root and third, or root and tenth, root and seventh, root and third. Or root and tenth, root and seventh, root and tenth. You see the left hand has a pattern to it, and the right hand fills in the missing harmonies, plus adds a color tone like a ninth. And that's great for comping. <laughs> another chord in there to approach chord to the two. And then the third technique with the bass lines and the chord in the left hand. So I'm going to do it in F now. So now it's a good idea to practice these either in cycles, like two, five, ones, and continue the cycle. Or it might be easier for you to just stay with one of the techniques, one of the positions, and work it in separate keys. Like start with the key of C, master that, get really good at playing in C with in, using inversions and melodies in the right hand. Then, then go to the key of F and practice that for a while. You know, you can practice them right through cycles. You know, like for instance, you could do, uh, you could practice them in cycles like, you know, to playing them in inverted so I now you will have to switch positions sometimes in these if you're going through the cycle like I might, I might start here now I might want to change position in other words I'm changing from a root position to a third inversion that type of thing to make it sound better and eventually as you get used to playing it in certain inversions you just go to them automatically and it translates over into tunes you know you'll eventually be you'll be using these in tunes but you want to practice them as a drill to start and these are the three positions I suggest you start with so you can learn to play with a bass player as a lead instrument 
you can learn to comp in a band in the second technique and in the third technique you can learn to accompany a singer or a guitarist or a saxophone player when there's just two of you and you want to play bass lines or the bass you don't have a bass player in your band you can you can play you can be the bass player and the chordal instrument see so to learn these three techniques and through the cycle of fists will really prepare you to do be versatile be able to do a lot of things on the piano and that's really a great thing to have learned so we'll have a sign off now Signing off from the Jazz Ranch. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and you learned something. Please leave me a comment. I love comments and I always respond to all comments if you give me enough time. I just want to talk briefly about my book. I've sold thousands of copies of this book and people say it's the best book they have in their collection. So it has examples and theory and songs to play. And it's very practical because it's laid out to be, it's designed to be used in a three ring binder so you can take pages out it lies flat on the music stand you can easily take pages out for photocopying so check it out on my website and if you can't afford my book write to me and I'll give you a deal so until next time I'll say in the words of my great friend upstairs Hermie Dressel swing loose and we'll see you back at the ranch next time bye bye